Today, I'm going to show you guys how to prep for delivering puppies. Hey guys, it's a little bit later today. This morning, I went ahead and got all the chores done. Josh left to go take some pictures up at Jordan Lake with our friends from Land LTD. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to prep for delivering puppies. Now, we do still have a few more weeks, but it is not too early to start getting ready. So one of the first things that I'm going to do is actually prep this space here and get it set up as a whelping area or a whelping box for Miss Mama Piper. Um, to do that though, I need to put these squash away, but I really wanna put them in my pantry. However, I need to make a space and clear off one of the shelves. my beautiful butternut squash on their shelf. I organized this a little bit. So. I'm so excited. So we did end up creating our own um, pasta sauce. Well, this is just, you know, um, just tomatoes and then there's some of our basil in there. And then of course pickles. We've got several jars of pickles that I made. Um, this will be good. So this is the dehydrated pan patty squash. So I can put this in soups. I have two of those that I dehydrated. I also have some of this in the freezer as well. So I've got that. And we have several jars of tomato sauce, including this one over here too that Josh just made last month. So, so excited to have these. I cannot wait for next year when this whole shelf is nothing but canned goods. I'm so excited. And I'm so excited to have these up here. So hopefully we'll get some pumpkins next year too. Um, and then have pumpkins and squash in our pantry. And I can hardly wait. Um, I'm so excited. It's also exciting to have our freezers full of not only chickens but guys i'm gonna show you our freezer because it's pretty pretty cool to me anyways um but i've got soup that i've already made that i froze we've got several gallons of green beans in here this is turkey bone broth this is beef bone broth and then i have several quarts of squash soup. I've got cubed butternut squash. I have more squash soup down here. And, you know, more green beans. So, I'm excited, guys. We're really, this next year, going to focus on eating more of the food that we grow um, and make and you know that's hard it's we've come a long ways we came from you know living in the city where we went to the grocery store or we ate out a lot um, and so it's definitely been a transition for us however you know we're doing so much better than what I think both Josh and I thought we would do now I'm going to finish cleaning up this area um, moving this probably over onto the cabinet there and then um, figuring out how I'm going to set this up. So if you watched um, the video of our last litter being born, which I'll see if Josh can like put it over here, they were born in a just a simple plastic pool just because it was super easy cleanup um, and it was kind of a confined space that Piper could keep the puppies in and then they stayed in that for the first couple weeks of life until they started opening their eyes and exploring more and then they got upgraded. So 
because it is winter, these puppies are going to grow up primarily in this room. Um, and it's a big enough room that we can definitely set that up. And once we start working on potty training, the door is right there. So it'll be, it'll be good. It'll be a good setup for them. I just have to figure out how I want that. Got that all moved and swept up. So now um, we were given a children's toddler bed by one of our friends um, because they didn't need it anymore. And so we're actually, we've been letting Piper sleep on that and she loves it. So this will be her temporary preparation spot. So let's go sit down and talk about what else you need to prepare for puppies. Now that we have our whelping area set up, uh, I do want to go over just a couple of things before I go into our whelping kit. Some very basics that you want to do for the whelping area is make sure that it is a space that you can easily clean. Now I say this because as the puppies get older, you will need to be cleaning it on a regular basis multiple times a day because puppies can get dirty and it's also very important to maintain a clean environment so that you don't have any sick puppies. With that being said, the space that we chose for our whelping area this time is in our utility room and it has a linoleum floor that is super easy to clean, easy to sweep, easy to mop, um, very easy. In the past, we have used our garage, which is a cement floor. Again, very easy to sweep, very easy to mop, um, easy to clean. So because it is winter time, keeping the puppies and the mama dog in the house is important to maintain proper body temperature. A lot of people will use heating lamps um, to ensure the puppy's body temperature stays the same. So something that we will use instead will actually be a small space heater. Now Piper does a great job mothering and keeps them really close to her. Some moms do not do that and so the use of a heating pad can be very helpful and beneficial to the puppies in maintaining their body temperature. Um, but for us, using just a simple space heater has done perfect in the past. Shortly after the puppies are born, you will want to keep that temperature of their environment around 85 to 90 degrees, especially during the first four days. When puppies are born, they are not able to maintain their body temperature. So you will see a lot of puppies will be cuddled together for warmth. They will also try to be as close to mom as possible. Now again, Piper does a great job with this, but not every dog has those awesome mothering instincts. So if your mama dog is not super attentive and does not keep the puppies near her, you will need an external heat source, whether that is a heating pad, a heating lamp, or a space heater to keep that area between 85 and 90 degrees. Let's go ahead and dive into the whelping kit. Now, this is my third time using this exact same whelping kit and I love it because I use absolutely every single part of it and it doesn't quite break the bank. Um, so this is our whelping kit from Canine Breeding Innovations and it comes in a box uh, with everything but you also get a packet of paperwork. So some helpful things in here that it includes and this is very important for right before giving birth, is they include this worksheet where you can go through and mark the temperature of the mom for a week. Now, why is this important? This is important because your dog's temperature will drop 
and once that temp drop down to 98.8 or below 98 degrees means puppies are coming and puppies are coming within 24 hours of that first drop. It is super important to start taking your female's temperature the same time every day, several times a day, a few days before the expected due date. So um, it allows you to mark what time you took the temperature where the temperature was. Uh, so this chart will help you with that and know that once you're in the blue, puppies are coming. Um, so that's super exciting. It also has in here, if you are needing to write down the information so that it's easily accessible, there is an emergency contact sheet that you can fill out. It allows a space for your local vet, the emergency vet, mentor or breeder, um, a good neighbor or friend that can come and help if needed. Another thing that I love about this whelping kit is they offer two, I'll preface this by, when picking the whelping kit, you can select the number of puppies you want it for. Having our last two litters be under or right around eight puppies, I went ahead and picked the eight puppy count again. If we have more than eight puppies, it's not a problem for us because I still have some of the supplies from our previous whelping kits and I make sure that I'm extra prepared. They do offer these worksheets for when the puppies are born and you can make notes of what number the puppy was, the gender, the time it was born, the puppy's color, any description of markings, the weight, and then you can also mark any additional notes. So say for our breed of, of dog, uh, natural bobtails are important to keep track of because breeding two natural born bobbed tail dogs together can create deformities in the breed. So keeping track of who was born with a full tail versus who was born with a natural bobbed tail is important to us. Not that any of our puppies are sold with breeding rights, but it's just important information to keep track of. Um, but you can mark that on those documents. Another thing that I love from this company is they send in a worksheet where you can keep track of the puppy's weight as they grow each week. So again, it has all eight puppies listed. You can put the date, you can put how old they are, or um, you know the date of each week and it goes through all the way to eight weeks of age. And if you don't know to do this, it's very important to keep track of the puppy's weight on a daily basis. That way you know that everybody's gaining weight and if somebody is not gaining weight, then maybe setting aside some separate time for that puppy to either get an extra feeding or to supplementally feed that puppy um, so that it continues to gain weight. This is also important to keep track of if somebody is losing weight um, or if somebody is gaining way more weight than everybody else, maybe they get a little bit less feeding time or you know, maybe you have something else going on and a puppy is sick and you don't really know until you see, oh my gosh, this puppy is losing weight. This is also something important for post whelp. This is another temperature chart that they have. The thing that you wanna do is you want to continue taking the mother's temperature for at least a week after she delivers. This is because it will be a big indicator if mom is healthy and everything's fine with her. You wanna make sure she doesn't get any infections. And during the first week after whelping is when your mama dog is most susceptible to getting some sort of infection that she can especially pass along to those puppies. So this is another important worksheet to fill out. Now, some of the other paperwork in here, it also gives you a list with some recommendations of things to keep on hand during the whelp or right before. So onto the whelping kit. So the first thing that's listed here is actually a tail wrap. Now this is not something I need. My female does not have a tail. My dogs don't have tails. But if you did have a dog with a tail, it is wise to wrap it up that way, especially if they have a long fluffy tail. All of that fluff is confined. It's not going to get super gross and covered in blood and whatnot. The next thing that it talks about is eight absorbent disposable whelping pads. That is just simply puppy pads. Now, it includes eight 
And the reason for that is it makes it so much easier if you put this under the mama as she delivers each puppy. So again, once the first puppy is born, you know, cleaning the puppy up, getting that all cleaned up, taking that puppy pad, pulling it up, throwing it away, putting a new one down for the next puppy. Super easy. I like doing it this method. I'm so glad that they include these. However, I also have an extra stash on hand just in case I put one down and it gets bloodied and soiled before the next puppy is born. That way I can just replace it with another one. Um, but that is definitely something useful that I love having on hand. So there's both of those packs of them. The next thing it talks about is eight pairs of disposable gloves. Um, again, this is just optional. You don't have to use them. I do use them just when the puppy initially comes out. However, you know, if, if the puppies come quick, which our first litter, there were, um, all seven puppies were born in a matter of two hours. Super quick. There was barely enough time between puppies to get everybody cleaned up and settled down before the next puppy came. So, um, this is something that you can use if you have the time to, and is also recommended. Um, but also, I understand if puppies come quick and you don't have time to change your gloves. The next thing it talks about is eight individual disposable receiving cloths. So these are just little cloths that you can catch each puppy with and wipe them down and clean them up. Super helpful. That way each puppy has a fresh clean towel to be dried off with and you don't have to worry about, oh, do I have another towel? Do I have another towel? The next thing that it talks about is an aspiration bulb. So you do get one of these. This is very helpful if puppies come out and they have fluid in their mouth or in their nose, uh, you can just go ahead and squeeze it out. So again, very helpful. Something that not a lot of people think about having. The next one after that is an unwaxed package of dental floss. Now, why do you need dental floss for puppy delivery? Well, if you do not have clamps, this is super easy to use to help when uh, cutting the umbilical cord. Now, most mother dogs will cut it themselves. They will eat the umbilical cord. However, some moms will try to do that and actually cause hernias because they bite too close to the baby. Um, so something I do, sometimes I will let Piper do that, but other times I will say, hey, let me stop, let me step in and help. And I go ahead, tie this around the umbilical cord and then use my scissors and cut. That is another thing that is not in this list that you will need is just a good pair of scissors. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. I have scissors that I use in my kitchen. Um, I just clean those off and sterilize them and use them for puppy delivery. The next thing is it does have eight ID bands in here. This is extremely helpful, especially if you have puppies that look alike. So with Australian Shepherds, there are four colors. However, if all of them come out black tries or all of them come out red tries, this is helpful in helping me know the difference between each puppy. This is also good because they are Velcro and you can cut them to size. So I like to leave them extra big so that I, they can stay on longer. Of course, some puppies' necks are teeny, teeny tiny, so it might go around two or three times but it is helpful that they are Velcro. So I definitely like to use these. The last thing that's in here is there are also some iodine pads uh, that you can use for just keeping everything nice and clean um, with the puppies to help cut the umbilical cord and then after cutting as well. That is the complete kit. We already went over the forms and it also comes with this nice checklist so that you know everything has been marked as that it was packed correctly. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to help answer them. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video going over how to prepare for puppies. Very basics. Again, you can find this kit online. Um, I have ordered it through Amazon for the last three litters, and it's just a simple canine whelping kit by Canine Breeding Innovations, or you can order it online at pregnantdog.net. We hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you are as excited to welcome these little bundles of joy as much as I am. We'll see you tomorrow.